Hi everyone and welcome to this video where we'll show you how to install electronic targets at an outdoor shooting range. The installation of the firing line equipment will be explained in a separate video and we'll also have several other videos that will show you how to use and operate the Kongsberg eScore system and its new groundbreaking virtual platform. Now usually the electronic targets are installed in one of three ways. This can be done either at a concrete slab in a traditional target pit or by using our armored target stands on the ground. Target installation at a concrete slab is the most common way for entirely new shooting ranges to install their targets. We recommend making a 2 meter or 6 foot wide concrete slab across the target line. We also recommend making a 40 centimeters or 16 inch high knee wall at the center of the slab. By attaching a couple of impregnated 2x4 planks with an individual distance of 10 cm or 4 inches at the top of the knee wall, the targets can be attached easily with solid screws. Now don't let the inspection hatch at the rear of the target rest against the upper 2x4. Allow there to be a small space for moisture to dry up. This way targets are easily accessible for maintenance and inspection, both in the front and at the back. You should also note that we strongly recommend attaching the targets at the front of the knee wall in order to more easily and conveniently access the target electronics. Typically a bullet catcher is placed behind the target and we recommend at least 2 meters or yards distance between the bullet catcher and the target. Please also remember proper drainage of the target line area. Another important thing is to place the target correctly you have to ensure that the front of the target is facing the firing line. Now the correct orientation is obvious when the target is fully mounted, but it's less obvious if it isn't and the front circle is not visible. To make sure the target is facing the right way, you can check the stickers on the lower right side of the inspection hatch. They will always face the firing line if the target is placed correctly. Please also note that one of these stickers shows which target number is assigned to it and we recommend installing them in that order. If you want to avoid making a concrete knee wall, it's also possible to make metal stands for the targets that are bolted to the concrete slab. The targets don't come with target numbers above the targets as seen in this picture. Therefore, it's also important to make room for target number plates when you install the targets. Target number plates cannot be attached directly to the targets, so they have to be installed in another way. A roof covering the targets will protect them very well and you can add the target numbers to that, but it's not really required since our targets are built to last and can withstand extreme weather conditions. Most of all the electronics in the target are installed at the bottom of the target behind the inspection hatch. Therefore it's strongly recommended to protect the lower 55 centimeters or 22 inches of the target from stray bullets. Protection is usually done by a second knee wall in front of the target line and a pile of sand or gravel, but we also have solutions for protection with armor plates if no second knee wall has been planned. Now we often see that targets are installed in existing traditional target pits. The electronic targets might fit into the existing target lift, but it all depends on the difference between the width of the electronic target and the width of the existing target lifts. However, this installation method has proven to be a bit awkward as target cables often seem to get hooked on the targets when raising or lowering them. Also, access to the targets is often limited when maintenance needs to be done. Therefore, we propose making a simple modification to the traditional target pit, using the front wall and the existing target lift as a base for a new floor. Targets are then permanently attached to the top of the target lifts. This way, all targets may also be easily accessed from both sides for maintenance and inspection. Again, most of or all of the electronics are installed at the bottom of the target behind the inspection hatch. That's why we strongly recommend to protect the lower 55 cm or 22 inches section of the target from stray bullets. In this installation setup, you should install the targets at the proper height to let the existing front wall of the target pit protect the lower part of the target. As mentioned before, KTS can provide target stands, including armored steel plates to protect the lower part of the targets. Despite these stands and armor plates being very heavy, they still need to be secured to the ground to avoid strong wind tilting the targets. 
In these cases, we recommend making a wide base of planks, sort of like a railway, where railway as shown is in the picture. The armor plates are deflecting stray bullets toward the ground. Please make sure that no cables or other equipment is put in the deflection zone below the armor plates when installing the system. It's really easy installing multiple target lines at the same shooting range, which is one of the many great features of the eScore system. However, please make sure to fit each target line with a separate bullet catcher. If not, bullets aimed at one target line may easily end up at the rear target lines, even though they're not necessarily in a straight line. This may cause damage or wear to the rear targets. When it comes to the target line, it will need electric power. There are three ways of doing that. One is with the use of a power cabinet. Another way is by using simple mains power. And finally, you can also use batteries. We've developed a waterproof target power cabinet for mains power. It's called power cabinet with switch in everyday speech. And these cabinets are typically supplied for target lines consisting of more than seven targets, although they can be used for any amount of target lines. Try not to confuse this cabinet with the power cabinet with e-hub, which is usually placed at the firing line. The cabinets look exactly the same, but we mark them differently to avoid confusion. The cabinets need to be connected to a mains power outlet somewhat close to it. We have enclosed a drilling template, an extra long drill bit extension, screws and plugs to ease the wall mount of the cabinet. If we don't inform you otherwise, the cabinet is best placed at the center of the target line and can provide power for 16 targets on each side, in total 32 normal outdoor targets. Several power cabinets can be used and connected if the target line is fitted with more targets. The cabinet is connected to two of the closest targets on each side of it by using ordinary target cables. These cables are normally 5 or 6 meters or yards long, if not otherwise agreed upon. Please note that a power outlet is needed in fairly close proximity to the cabinet. If the system is to be installed with wireless communication between the firing line and the target line, the target can also be powered by simple mains power at one end of the target line. This power can supply up to 16 targets in a row. Provide a connection point for the Wi-Fi antenna, a T-shaped auxiliary cable may be needed for the system. The white part of this cable is connected to the power supply. One of the black cables is connected to the closest target and the last part of the cable will later be connected to the Wi-Fi antenna cable. It's also possible to power the target line with batteries. We can provide two different battery packs, a small 24 volt 7 ampere and a large 24 volt 34 uh, ampere. Now the small pack is only suited for one or two targets, but the large pack can supply 10 targets for a full day of shooting. The battery packs are also connected at one end of the target line, and for the simple mains power solution, an auxiliary cable is connected between the power source and the nearest target. All the targets are connected with target cables. These cables carry both signal and power. The target cables come in different lengths, but the standard that we delivered the system with is 2.5 meters between each target and 5 meters between the power cabinet and each target. We delivered the targets with two different types of cables depending on what our customers' requirements are. We have the M23 cables and the Amphenol cables. Since the battery packs and the simple power can supply a limited number of targets, additional power can be added to a large target line. For this purpose, a power injection cable is used. This cable is also T-shaped. The black end of the cable is connected to the targets and the orange end is connected to an additional KTS provided power source. Since the eScore system is a TCP IP based system, the firing line and target line could theoretically be connected using a network cable. However, outdoor ranges are often more than 100 meters long, which coincidentally is the theoretical limit of a network cable. And moisture and lightning can cause problems if it's set up this way, so therefore we have developed solutions for Wi-Fi communication and fiber optic communication that are far more suitable for outdoor ranges. Wi-Fi communication between the target line and the firing line is probably going to be the most likely choice in the future for all electronic targets. It's set up in a matter of a few minutes, it's cheap and you can easily integrate multiple target lines into the system. 
The antenna, marked as the target line link antenna, is mounted on a pole close to the target line, but with enough distance to avoid it getting shot at and is then connected to the antenna cable. The antenna cables are usually provided in lengths of 25 meters or 50 meters. If it's possible, you should mount the antenna on a pole 3 to 4 to 5 meters or yards above the ground. And it's very important, it must face the firing line. A bracket is supplied with the antenna and we can also provide antenna stands for the mobile ranges. The other end of the antenna cable is connected to the power supply cabinet or the auxiliary cable, whichever is supplied with the system. It's advised that the connectors at the antenna and auxiliary cable are not left on the ground to prevent moisture into the connector, although they are waterproof. What you see here is a typical Wi-Fi communication setup for a target line consisting of seven or more targets. This is why we have included a power cabinet. Please make sure that the Wi-Fi antenna installed at the target line is marked with target line. A similar antenna might be used at the firing line as well, but they're also marked according to their use to avoid confusion and errors while setting up the system. Please note that the Wi-Fi antennas are pre-installed with matching frequencies and channels and to avoid confusion or mistakes, we've added a color-coded sticker to each of them. The Wi-Fi antennas will only work with another antenna with the same color code. The target line and the firing line can also be connected by the use of fiber optic cables. If the target line and the firing line are powered by a power cabinet, you will also need to install a so-called fiber optic SFP converter on the switch inside the power cabinet. The SFP converter connects to LC connected multi-mode fiber optic cables. Keep in mind that there is only room for two fiber optic SFP converters in each cabinet and if needed we can provide network switch cabinets with multiple fiber optic connections for use in target lines or at the firing line. The target line is automatically powered up when the battery pack is connected or when the cabinet or the power supply is connected to mains power. Please remember to disconnect again when the system is not in use. So basically that's how you install the eSport targets at the target line. We've also made separate videos for installation at the firing line. We're not afraid to say that there are no other systems on the market that are easier to install and use than the Kongsberg targets eScore system. Thanks so much for watching and please watch our other videos at our YouTube channel or visit our website at www.kongsbergtargets.com to learn more about the eSports system and installation at the firing line.